So I don't make it a public post. Let's see. Um, In case people are wondering, like, yes, we know we're live. <laughs> oh, so we're oh, yeah, that's true. Because it is it's uh, not a mistake. Hi. Right. Sorry. Okay. 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 Hey, everyone. Happy Tuesday. We missed. Oh, look at my muscle. I'm so proud of it. Uh, <laughs> we missed you guys last Tuesday, but we are here this Tuesday. I know you guys missed us because you love our bantering and our satire and all the other stuff that we do but we are in the building it's just um girls club only we may have db joining uh gerard is out today but we'll see him next week so um same time same bad channel we're gonna go around and say well there's only two of us we're gonna go back and forth and say <laughs> what we are drinking and why we are happy today so michelle what are you drinking and why are you happy so today I'm drinking oh, your cup. champagne out of this cup. This cup made me happy. It is Astros, the Rockets, and the Texans logo all mashed up into one. And my name is on the side, but um, like this is cool cup. And um, yeah, so champagne from a bottle that was opened over the weekend, probably Sunday, maybe. I don't know. But um, I have this really cool stopper, and so it kept it. But I was like, longer just today, it's gonna be hot garbage. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, I've decided to just have this. And um, I struggled today to find something to be happy about. Um, my family got some really terrible news today. But what I can say is that the way we're all rallying around each other and congratulating not not congratulating, encouraging yeah. Um, yeah. each other is. Um, that at least is something to, to smile about, but yeah. oh Lord, pray, yeah. pray for my family because we yes. please do. The struggle is a real struggle. So, yeah. That's true. So, Tia, what are you drinking or why are you happy today? So, truly, one day you're going to sponsor me. Um, <laughs> I was going to keep having wishful thinking and speaking it into the atmosphere. Um, but truly have some new drinks, you guys. So, they. <laughs> <laughs> they have a mango chili margarita. It is so delicious. It has a little spice to it with a mango and it's not super sugary, but it still has a little like um to it. So I really these like are great. Oral sugar it. or the other stuff. It's natural flavored water. <laughs> it has it does have agave in it though. It has agave sea salt, um, stevia, like a little bit of pear juice. It has like juice, but it's just really minimal, so it's not like a lot of okay. all right well, well we'll take that positive <laughs> um why am I happy um I had a good weekend I um had to use some southwest flight credits before they expired um I think I said this the week before no I didn't because we weren't out if you have credits from southwest I did not know this so I'm sharing knowledge you have to take your travel before it expires you can't just book the travel. So I was trying to book travel in August, but my certificate expired in June. And they were like, no, you have to travel before June. And I was like, really? I didn't even know that. I thought, okay, as long as you book it, you know, to use it before then. Um, so I say all that to say like last minute, found a cheap, I was like, where's the cheapest place we can go that's going to cover this uh, credit? And the person was like, oh, oh, you can go to um, Denver and this is how much the hotel would be if you do the package. So $48 later, we went to <laughs> Denver. Yeah, we had a good time. We went hiking in the mountain, in the little small mountains that were outside of 
um, Denver, and then we ate and had a good time and walked well, around. You can't even drive down the road for $48. So uh, exactly. exactly, I won. And I didn't realize Denver stayed open. So I was kind of jealous because, you know, Houston is a bigger city than um Denver and their downtown is like jumping like when we yeah. got there it was late and well you you've been to Denver but for those that haven't been to Denver like I was like it's like one o'clock and we went to this restaurant it was open to like two people were still out riding a little electric carts and stuff in Houston you will not find that like downtown is not popping like that so I was like I really appreciate Denver's downtown yeah. like only Main Street, and after that, there's nothing. There's nothing. Like there. Denver has a good little, you know, circle. Um, yeah. I was just there a couple of few weeks the, ago. Yeah. And yeah, it was like that 16th Street, yes. all up and down and through there. Yep. Yeah. It's Love like that's where we were off of 16. No cars, just everybody, we outside. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. They have dispensaries if you indulge in that. So people were out doing that and no one cared, and everyone had a good old high time. So yeah we had a good time there all right well we we do have a guest that's going to be logging on in a second so we're not going to get too much into the topic today but we're going to talk about unrealistic realities yeah. um <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say I could, do, I could do a real quick sports shout out oh, okay, um so, so this weekend you know they had the Kentucky Derby it was a wild race but um there's a group of black women who own a horse and I thought that was really cool and that horse uh won a race and so it's like like black people have always kind of been involved but it hasn't been really put on display but it's like yeah these five black women that went in put in bought a horse and then their horse delivered um and not you know specifically the derby but in another race but it was like okay go girls I wonder how much they won um I wonder I, I don't know I didn't um research that deep but I was just like reading like, right. I like that. y'all get it. Um, and to say like it's five, like they got money because right. the horses. Is <laughs> right, right. That's what oh, I like. like what's the, only what's five the of y'all, not 35. Right. <laughs> exactly. So then that was cool. Um, the playoffs are still going on. NBA, they're providing a little bit of excitement. But then the other thing I was going to talk about was um, Brittany Griner. Um, oh, yeah. and you know, like the U S is now getting involved mm-hmm. and they're, they're realizing like, okay, I should y'all tripping. Right. And so, um, her wife just graduated with a JD this past right. weekend, but, um, I just think that's, I feel like we knew, we always knew that right. that whole situation was some bull. Um, but now it's kind of like, all right, let's talk about it. Let's how long have they, they've had her detained for what, like two or three months now? Yeah, it's been when they were talking about it, the last was like 73 or 76 days. And this is uh, was still a good bit ago. So, yeah, yeah I'm like, we're, we're hitting on three months for sure. For some some, some hash oil. For it was oil. oil. Oh, yeah, Lord, oil. I thought she actually had some weed. Yeah. I mean, even though it's illegal, like, come on, like, it's. I feel like she's had time served at this point. Like and, and just being held, like there's no no nothing. Yeah, and like, what's like a, okay, she's being, no bond, like like illegally detained. Like, what are y'all trying to do? So that's that's crazy, but that is crazy. Yeah. DB, thanks for joining us. We no appreciate problem. you for joining us. Yeah, late, late as hell. No, I'm late. You're always late, it's all right. Huh? <laughs> you're always late, it's okay. <laughs> nah, like, Nine times out of ten, What are you drinking today? You need to send out the uh, invite properly. I didn't. Oh, okay. Can I tell you why I'm uh, mad today? No, we're not talking about that right now. We did that shit. We did that. Bro, I'm, I'm gonna tell you why I'm mad that, that you just mm-hmm. lied and said I didn't send out the invite, but everyone else made okay, it. But can you. I tell you why I'm mad today? Though? No. Why are you happy? Why are you happy? And what are you drinking? Why am I happy? No. Why are you happy? What are you drinking? I'm happy. You gotta find a reason. I'm, well, I'm happy. I'm happy because I'm I'm on. Finally, that's why I'm happy. I can tell you why I'm mad later. Yeah, we'll wait for okay. that. Okay. We'll wait for I, th- that. I thought we do. I thought we do mad first. We don't. No, never have we done that. It's the happy hour, and we start with why we're happy and what are we drinking, and right. then we end with the last call and why you mad. Did y'all did y'all enjoy y'all Cinco de Mayo? 
I did. Mm-hmm. It rained though. It sure it did. did. It out of nowhere, huh? It did rain. I had a pre Cinco de Mayo. It was pretty nice too. Mm-hmm. I balled out with thirty five dollars. Um, on thirty five dollars and bought everyone shots. Oh, oh of what? I got like eight shots for thirty five dollars. I told the bartender, I was like, I so I need some tequila for my friends. Um, can yeah, he just hit you all like that? And then he was like, Oh, I got you, boo. And I was like, Okay, boo. <laughs> <laughs> so well, well, well. <laughs> I got my ticket. I was like, thirty five dollars. All right then, because I was so yeah, nervous. Funny. So yeah. so yeah, I actually had a good weekend. I had friends uh, come into town. And so uh, we kicked it pretty hard every day. Um, I think I must have had something dipped in shrimp juice because my voice is gone mm-hmm. or what. I don't know. But um, probably at 50, 15. Oh. Um, and so um, I don't know, but I'm here. I'm breathing on my own. So all is good. Um, I'm happy you are. I don't want yeah. to breathe it with it within a sister. So with that, uh, uh, uh. okay. So I feel like we should let me while we're doing that. Um, Could you tell us what you're drinking, DB? Do you oh, have yeah. anything? Oh, I'm drinking uh some Mark Tails cognac, and I'm mixing it with some uh Crystal Light lemonade. Oh um, yeah, because you're doing. Are you still doing vegan? <laughs> Man, that shit lasts for like two weeks. Oh Lord, two weeks longer than a lot of people. That was a valiant effort. No, it wasn't a value. I could do better, but I, I think that I think well, that screw, I won't motivate you. Screw you. You did awful. How about that? <laughs> I mean, hey, don't don't lie to me. Tell me the truth. Well, but, that was a good effort. I mean, yeah, I feel like I'm not, because my background and my history, I know that I can do better. It's just that I fell out so hard these these last couple of years that it's you know it's frustrating. But I don't. Know, I just don't feel like myself because I'm not used to I'm not used to being what I used to be. You know, because the way I work, but. Hopefully that'll change soon. Oh, good. All right. Yeah. Um, well, there anything? What were you gonna say? Sports Hi. related. Uh Chris Paul was about to knock the socks and brakes off of. Did you guys see that? The yeah. young man that was at the game and uh I guess he physically touched his I think it was his mother and mother something. and his wife and his mother and his wife. His, yeah. Okay, yeah. And uh the 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 kid looked young and I just yeah. He, him and his mother looked like such victims when they were leaving like oh my god why do we have to leave what's going on I wish no, I would have seen the video before like I wanted to, you know I wanted to know what happened before right. um but I was cracking up when Chris Paul was like I'll see, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna see you like I'm not telling you I'm gonna hurt you but I'm if I catch you I'm gonna get you, you. see <laughs> so okay so I don't know what happened so tell me well according to the news sources that uh, Chris Paul's uh, mother and um, his uh, wife. wife and the children was there as well. They got into some kind of altercation where the, the mother was shoved. And Wait, the Chris Paul's wife or Chris Paul's mom? Chris Paul's mom. mom was Chris the Paul mother was shoved by yeah. who? Little white boy. By a fan, by a Dallas Maverick <laughs> cowboy. And he looked young like 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 Zach from Saved by the Bell, but brown hair. Like yeah. that kind of yeah. look. Like, so like 16 or 17? No, nah, he might have been like 21, 22. He probably was older, but he looked like a high schooler. But yeah. I'm sure he was, you know, yeah. older. Yeah. So he just thinks it's okay to show up an older black woman. Okay. Exactly. And, then, and they had the whole Chris Paul back because he was... Do you know if he knew that that was Chris Paul's mom? Uh, I'm pretty sure he did. Only oh, maybe he did. But I mean, they sit in court side. Like, obviously, there's someone. So it's somebody on the team's people. So who do you think you are? And again, like I said, they were playing so victimized when they were asking them to leave. Like, looking back, like, what is going on? Yeah, exactly. So it was exactly. just really, really mm. weird. You play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. Good and there's that. Exactly. So, yeah. Hello, okay. hello, Sergio. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear y'all. How y'all doing? We're good. How are you today? Are you enjoying this Ace Town weather? Yes, I am. I feel good out here. Okay, you like the heat. All right. I like the heat a little bit. A little bit. Okay. <laughs> well, it's a lot of bit of heat. Right. <laughs> the first one that said that. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow I'll feel a little different. <laughs> right. Once you once you once it's ten o'clock and it's still ninety five degrees and ninety percent humidity, you'll feel totally different about that. 
So you are here to talk about um, your album. You have a show today. You got so much stuff going on here in Houston. Yeah, yeah. I got a show. The show, I got a listening session tomorrow, which I'm really, really excited about. Got so many people coming out here from Houston. And then I got a show on Thursday at Greasy okay. Spoon. And that's going to be hard. That's going to be dope. That's at the Pearland location. Okay. So you got to come I'm out okay. here for my benefit. Yeah, we, right, look, we'll, we'll, we'll check you out. We talked to Shay. She told us all the deets about where you were going to be and all that good stuff. So we are excited to have you on the show because I know you have some stuff to do. So we appreciate you for stopping by before you, did, you do your show today. Right. Um, so let's let's get into because I don't want to hold you up. I know you had a project. Um, your newest project came out in April. It's called Before It's Too Late. Yeah. So this is your sophomore album, correct? This is this is my third album, but honestly, okay. it feels like a first album because I think for the first time in my life, I have really found my sound okay. in totality. And I found a way to express my experiences in a way that is just timeless, honestly. The album is just really personal for me. And okay. I, it, even though it's my third album, it feels like a first one. Sometimes it takes, you, you know, they say third time is a charm. Yeah, true. I was going to ask that question. Like, so after your hiatus, what did you do differently? Like, did you, you know, spend time in the mountains, you know, in the ocean at a, at a, at a retreat with God and then you figured it out? Like, what happened? Where do you think that development came from? New experiences. And I gave myself the freedom to experience and feel in relationships and even situationships. Oh, yeah. I gave myself that, that clearance to, like, really just let it be what it's going to be. It didn't have to be a full relationship for me to find love in it, even if it was something that was only for two weeks or two days. If the feeling was, if the feeling was real, then I allowed that to overtake me. And I think that you hear in the music that some of it doesn't feel like it's a sure thing. Some of it feels like it's just a little fling, or sometimes it may be something that doesn't come into full view like I wanted it to, but it still mm -hmm. gave me just this deep love that's indescribable. So I think that's what I did. Cause before I was a little bit more like, this is how it's going to be. You got to be a relationship. You got to be that way. So, yeah. So the smash and dash gave you a good hit. Exactly. It gave me got all it. those things. Cause even smash and dash turned into to two weeks or- It could. Month, you know what I mean? Yeah, I people smash and dash. I loved you real good. I loved you real good for three days. For three days. <laughs> the best, ever. best ever, like for real. You're giving me like Devontae swing vibes from Joe to see. Oh, for real? I like yeah. Devontae. Yeah, like his, the glasses, like this is energy. Like I've seen him in interviews. He just seemed like real chill. And his words kind of sound like poems. And what you said just sounded like a poem. So it kind of gave me that Devontae really, swing vibes. I like that. I like hey, that. They said you also are oh, you're an actor. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I've been acting for oh, quite a while. I did some stuff in Atlanta. I used to live in Atlanta before I moved to Los Angeles. So okay. I did that there. I've actually had some major auditions since I've been in LA, um, but I didn't, I haven't gotten to the space that I want to, but like I have, I have an agent. I have just a lot of energy around me. So the opportunities are about to open up, but I love acting, drama, comedy. I really love comedy just because you get to, it pulls me out of my element because I'm super chill, super relaxed, but it kind of makes me let loose a little bit. You chill? Who would have thought? <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? Really? So you so you went to Clark Atlanta and you studied fashion. Yes, I did. Okay, okay. So what made have you always been fashion savvy, like in high school and going into college? Is that something that you enjoy too? Yeah, I've always had an appreciation for fashion. I've always had an appreciation for the create creations of making people look and feel a certain type of way. And mm -hmm. I learned that from my grandmother as a little kid. So when I learned that it just kind of followed me for the rest of my life. So I went there and I learned so many different things, how to create color, science of color, just pattern making and just really kind of just creating ensembles. You know what I mean? I studied costumes and everything. So, yeah. Oh, so, so do like, you have no, a stylist now? No, it's just me. Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering, I'm like, because if they pull something off the rack and you read them, right. like, <laughs> what well, we ain't going to do is right. Like, <laughs> I have collaborated with, collaborated with some, but I think that what the beauty is, is that they respect my degree and they respect mm. my business and they can add to it and pull me into spaces that I don't, I wouldn't necessarily go to, but they respect me. I think that they all 
kind of approach me like, well, what do you think about this first rather okay. than throw this on? You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Because right. they know you're not about to come out there in a white t-shirt and some sagging pants. So they exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I know you know most guys they they know red, blue, green, black, yellow. So you know all the colors, like pastels, ivory. Yeah. You know all that. Right? I know all the colors. Like okay. chartreuse. I, I had to learn it. Yeah. yeah. I had to. That's dope. That's dope. You know the difference between peach, orange, apricot. You know, guys, we said it's all the same colors. <laughs> See, and I was, t I, I used to think like that until I had to learn the difference, you know? Yeah, yeah. Right. And they do different things on our skin tone, especially yeah. as beautiful black people. We look different in different colors. Yeah. So yeah. do things to compliment you. Definitely. Yeah. That is, so what got you into music? Because you, you were doing fashion in college and then what, what pivoted you into the music industry? Well, I've always loved music ever since I was a little kid. I've been singing since I was five. Okay. And my grandmother, she could sing too. So I, I guess I just was inspired by her heavily. Yeah. And yeah, so, but when I came to Clark Atlanta, there were so many people who had heard my voice and they were like, yo, can you demo some records? I had label meetings. I had just so much attention with my voice. And I was just like, dang, y'all really, y'all really like this? And they was like, yeah. So I started singing and I started recording my own music. And I recorded this song called Pretender. And when I recorded that song called Pretender in the Atlanta University Center, it created this cult following mm. that propelled my career to the level that it is now. Like now I got fans all across the world, Paris, Africa, you know, Houston. Right. <laughs> Everywhere, yeah. You know what I mean? Just because of that one song. So my my road to music was inevitable. It was always gonna be the case, you know? Yeah. So so thinking about your current project and what you have out with um before it's too late what are you most proud of like what song speaks to you the most and then what do you see ahead okay the song that speaks to me the most from this album is probably close on uh, because it is very sexy but it's not about sex but it's about coming as you are like i believe like i tell people we come into this world the song is really about like how we come into this world we wear clothes to protect us from the sun to protect us from all the weather changes and just also just to hide ourselves as well. But I think that in relationships, or when you coexist with other people, sometimes you can kind of build armor around you that prevents a person from being able to fully hear you or communicate with you. So we'll close on, that record is about coming as you are, stripping all those layers off and just really exposing who you are as a person and being appreciated for that. So it speaks to me. and. I think that anybody that hears it, if you listen to it, of course it feels sexy, but it's really not about sex. I really say, like I say, even the first line is, it's dangerous to fall in love with somebody, like fall in, somebody, fall in love with somebody like me because I'm not the best at communicating. Um, but when I really mastered the art of letting down my guard and just being who I am and just understanding that that's significant and good enough, mm -hmm. it changed. All things change. My relationships with people, even my family, whatever it is, it began to change because I no longer had to be who the world told me to be. I could just be me, and that's good enough. Okay, um, I like that. Yeah, that's saying a lot, man. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I always look at yourself in the mirror and be like, "Man, uh, I got, I got to do, I got to change some things." Yeah, yeah. 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 So that's good. Well, so now you, you you're doing your album. Um, you, you, you're pushing it. Um, congratulations on that. Thank you. Do you have any influences, you know, out there that, that some people that influence you? And what do you think about the, the current state of our R&B right now? Oh, yeah. So I've been, like, being from Chicago, my mom forced us to listen to a lot of different people. And then I remember when I was a little, little kid, I discovered Brandy and Usher and Monica. And I, and also Drew Hill. I, I just... Joe to see, like, I really, like, you know, being of the 90s, like, I really gravitate towards those people. So you hear those influences, Maxwell, you hear Eric Badu, you hear those influences from in my music. You know, a little, little bit of this music, Soul Child is probably one of my biggest inspirations, though, because when I learned how to craft music, I really always wanted to get to the space to make music like how he makes music. It's real timeless. And I feel like this album is a reflection of that, Maxwell as well. Um, and current too, because this album is also a reflection of the current people that I love. So I love R&B where it is right now. I love Lucky Day. 
I mm-hmm. love Ari Lennox. Mm-hmm. I love um, Alex Isley a lot. You know, mm-hmm. Kenny Got Soul. I really love those artists. And I love being in a conversation among those people. You know, my fans, they have really, really praised this album so much. And, and it kind of put me up against the likes of those people like Masego and all those people. So it feels good to be in that company because I think R&B is great. It's just a matter of getting people to hear it at this point. Sure. You know? I'm gonna give you some tips though. Um, music Soul Child, songs are timeless, but his voice is not. Uh, I've heard him in concert three Wait times. He minute. sounds awful. I don't want you to parody yourself. I, I want you to that. be better than that. <laughs> I, that. I think that, I, that, so I think that it's really tough for people, I think that that's probably what it is, is his nerves probably come into play. Because as an artist, you share yourself with the world, with people, and you come into those spaces and everybody, they don't know how to navigate through that. I don't get nervous because I feel the most comfortable in front of a lot of people, it's crazy. I feel comfortable around a lot of people, singing for people, because I, in my mind, I think that maybe I'll never see them again. But if I could leave an impression, something that could, they could take with them forever. It matters to me. Uh-huh. But yeah, his nerves probably get the best of him. It's Every time? Every, Every time. Yeah. <laughs> Some people can't even tour, though, because of their nerves. Mm. That might be, well, let me maybe tell you, you should just stop touring. Not- <laughs> let me tell you, Do that your response was so great, because that could have been but, a set for, right. for uh, so, some R&B beef from battle, and you answered and navigated that so well. So right. we're going to spin our way out of this. And so tell us, tell the people how they can follow you and connect with you, get your music, all of that. Yeah, you guys can find me everywhere on Spotify, Apple Music, on Twitter, on Tidal, where everywhere you can stream music, as long as you spell my name right, it's S-I-E-R-G-I-O. So it's two I's in there. My TikTok is Sergio with two I's. So that's S-I-E-R-G-I-O with two eyes. And yeah, like you can find me everywhere. I'm gonna be coming to different cities. You got the OnlyFans page too? Nah, they want it because I got the body for it. <laughs> I got the body for it, okay. but I want to keep it artistic and I want to, you know, look at my album cover. My album cover, it gives you all of what you need. Cause I mm-hmm. want people to, I like people to create this idea of me and you know, for them to have that idea of me. So OnlyFans for me is never gonna happen. But shout out to everybody out there getting that money. Hey, you seen you seen Lucky Day album, right? You see how he stuff looking in the front. Lucky Day, he got the oh, stuff. Yeah. Right. I mean, exactly. you got sex sales, brother. It does, but I think that visually, I think that my art, I want to put it in a way that people can look at it and just think about the mystery. You know, what I mean, mystery just takes you so far. My, just blur it out. That's how you get around that. <laughs> blur it out. <laughs> you just boy, you see, you struggle. You just boy, so you, you, you. I'm you, trying to help you. <laughs> how much money you spending a month on OnlyFans? I don't spend any money on anything, regardless well, of that. <laughs> but you want to see me out there like that, y'all? See I didn't say I wanted to see you per se. I just asked if you had the platform. That's all I had. I got you, I got you. She was asking for a friend. <laughs> my only fans, but I'm on Instagram and Twitter at Sergio. And I want everybody to come out to my show out here. Yes. It's Thursday at, you know what I mean? Like at Greasy Spoon. Greasy it's going to be. Yeah, oh, it's that's be. this spot. Okay. Thursday or Wednesday? It's on Thursday. Thursday. Thursday, okay. And then yeah, you have, you have, have a listening party. Yeah. Oh, okay. Tomorrow, tomorrow I have a listening session. So if anybody, if anybody out there is listening and they are in Houston and they want to come, you guys can DM me. The first three people that DM me, they can come in. I'll get you in there. Just my Instagram is S I E R G I O. It's gonna be good vibes, good music, drinks, laughter. I'm gonna be in there introducing the songs and talking about the album up close and personal. And so I'm excited about that. And if y'all are free, y'all gotta pull up too. I mean, we we gonna we gonna see we gonna try to make it do what it is. <laughs> All right, I appreciate that. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, um, before we, our guests leave, we always ask them if there's anything that got on their nerves today. Was the traffic bad? Did you have an airplane delay? Did anything bother you today? Did anything bother me today? No, the only thing that bothered me today. All right, I'll tell you. <laughs> I'm, I'm staying at a hotel and the shower wasn't working. 
Oh, wow. The water was coming down, but it wasn't coming from the top thing. So that bothered me a little bit, but they rectified that real quick. First I, try not to, I try not to get lost in the problem because life's too mm -hmm. short. I try to, you know what I mean? I just try to have a conversation. Right. Yeah. That's okay. That's okay. Well, I'm glad you got a shower. We don't want you at the thing because it's hot here. You'll be musty. So we don't want that for you. <laughs> you don't want to go around H time like that. Exactly. Especially with this humidity. I got to right. stay fresh all day long. You have yes. to because people will talk You have about to it. hydrate. Yes. Just make sure you drink plenty of water. Uh, yes. Get you a little rag with a few ice cubes on the inside and dab. So exactly. you can stay in touch with your inner cool. You'll be all right. Yeah. I appreciate that for real. And I appreciate y'all for having me on here and just everything you guys are doing. And I'm happy that I could be a part of it just to spread my art and just speak to people and just put people on to this good music that I'm putting out. Before It's Too Late is an album. Honestly, it's one of the best albums that people have heard in years. So I just want the world to hear it. And I'm glad you guys gave me the chance to tell the people about it. Yes, definitely. Thank, Thank you. you we coming. appreciate Thank you for coming. And have a good time this weekend in Houston. I appreciate that. All right. Thank All right. So much. Thank bye you. Bye. It's too late. Yes, sir. Bye, y'all. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, the next guest is coming in hot. All right. And the next guest is. We popular. I know, right? <clears throat> hello, hello. Hello. Hi there. Hey, Miss Cat. <laughs> how are you doing? I am well. How are you guys tonight? Good. I feel like were you have you been up to GMT with us before? Well, not with you guys, but I am. I met you there a long time ago. Maybe so. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I'll, I do apologize. I meet and greet with so many people, so I do apologize. Um, and it's been some years since I've been right. um at GMT, but nonetheless, hello again. Hello, hello. hello. <laughs> Hello. So you are you are here to oh well first are you drinking anything because I know the last guest did not drink are you drinking it I I apologize see I wasn't familiar that we were supposed to bring cocktails <laughs> to the party <laughs> so okay. I, I I do apologize but y'all well, I'll take a drink for you so yeah, we'll, take, we'll take a little take for you. take take two three sips for me because <laughs> I am still here at the office so oh, oh man uh, okay. yeah so. But hey, I'm going to indulge once I leave. Look, <laughs> <laughs> well, you may not be drinking, but you can tell us why you are happy today. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm happy because I'm alive. <laughs> that works. That works. Be COVID, huh? You said what? Be the pandemic, huh? Yeah, exactly. So we we happen to be alive <laughs> at this Definitely. point in, in, in the game. That is very true. All right. Happy to be alive and no alcohol. Uh, we don't <laughs> <laughs> look you're like wait wait that don't really okay <laughs> you still smell without alcohol that's good <laughs> <laughs> okay so you have started something for is this for you because it's a tax prep academy so is it for youth or for anybody yeah so basically um for those that don't know me um i'm miss cat i am the owner of flat fee tax prep and services and so I do provide tax preparation services. And so through the course of my time, I've had people that I've trained, I've trained like hundreds of tax agents, um, you know, tax prep, but then a lot of people like, hey, you know, teach me the game, teach me how to, how to start my own. And so basically, you know, at first I was just kind of giving out nuggets here and there, but then finally I decided, you know what, let me put together a course, let me put together a full tax academy for anybody um, that's interested in, and in not only learning how to do taxes, but how to, you know, start and grow a six-figure tax firm. So that's that's pretty much what I've uh, put together and created. Okay. So how did you get started doing that? Like, did you go to school for this, or did you kind of turn so, that side hustle into a gig? <laughs> yes, pretty much. In essence, so so. Um, you mentioned, you know, GMT earlier. So I actually, you know, started in entertainment. Um, actually, uh, if you're familiar with K Nice's uh, TV show, the Hip Hop Hangout TV mm -hmm. show, you know, was I was, I, yes, yes, yes. So I helped him start and develop that show. So I started off as Miss Cat TV. That's how I got the name Miss Cat. And um, so I was in entertainment, love it. To death it is my passion but it doesn't pay 
the bills, right? Like a lot of people are like, yeah, that's cute and cool, but it's not, you know, <laughs> it's not paying the bills. Like you look right. cool and flashy, but like I need my bank account to match, you know, my hustle, right? So, right. you know, with that being said, uh, I did my final like main project that I did, I did a movie with ESG. Um, so shout out ESG. We did a movie called Screwed Up Christmas. And um, after that, I was just like, yo, like, I got, I have to like figure out something else. So a colleague of mine was like, Hey, you know, I've been doing taxes for a couple of years. I'm with this company, but I'm trying to branch off and do my own thing. So I was like, okay. She was like, well, if you, you know, if you're in limbo, if you're not doing nothing, like, can you help me, you know, get it going? And so I was like, okay, that'll work. So I dived in and helped her get hers off the ground. And so in that moment, you know, in that time frame, rather, it gave me the ability to learn the ins and outs of everything. And so with that said, when I seen her first deposit, so I'm not talking about like the course of her season, I'm saying her very first deposit uh, that she received was six figures. I was like, yo, like I, I, I'm in the wrong, I'm doing the wrong thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, um, so, you know, that, that motivated me to the, to the 10th power and then from there, I just branched off, did my own thing. And, you know, the rest was just history. So for those that think that you have to go to school, be a mathematician, a rocket science, <laughs> scientist rather to ah. taxes, like it's not even that serious. Like, <laughs> so, okay. yeah, so it's definitely, um, I'm not saying that, you know, like there's no, <laughs> you know, no work to it, but it's right. definitely not as intense as most people think, you know, that it is. It takes a lot though, because I stress my um, tax lady out all year long, and I know she gets so tired of me. And I just recently told her, "You gonna go to jail?" Because I don't see what she did and what you know. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't see how I went from this to this. So I could, I applaud you guys for being able to put those numbers together and make it make sense. Because I literally was waiting for the IRS to accept. Because I was like, "I'm going to jail." Because they initially they were like. Yours is on hold. I said, well, I never seen it before. <laughs> I like it on hold. <laughs> so I'm literally like Googling, like, what does a hold mean? Does it mean I'm going to jail. And then I hear it. I said, let me tell you something. They, they come for me, you going too, like Nino Brown. We all going down. That's <laughs> what oh, <wow. laughs> you want to get on it. <laughs> Everybody got out of it. <laughs> like, we all going to jail together. Like, <laughs> right. and I'm taking the whole crew down. So I commend you for being able to do that because I know you have to deal with people like me who are stressed out and you got to, <laughs> you know, people don't have their stuff organized. So that does take a lot of, uh, of, of brain power to do that. <laughs> so are you going to add, so you have the Tax Prep Academy. I'm just asking, are you going to add some financial literacy? Because I feel like that our community needs that. So yeah. <sighs> I don't know if you're like, you know, affirming something that I was I like literally just talking about today. Like, oh, so. it's been affirmed. <laughs> Look at that. Moving <laughs> so through me. Like you just confirmed something. So I've been in works uh, with, so not necessarily in my tax academy. So I do drop gems and nuggets. Like anybody that's attached to me and anybody that, you know, mentors under me, they always going to get more than what they pay for. Trust me. You can talk to any of my students I'm always dropping gems. I'm always giving knowledge, but um, I am, the, and this is like, like I said, literally, we just talked about this today. So nothing solidified, but I have been thinking about potentially putting together like a podcast or something um, of that nature because taxes, credit, you know, all that stuff go to hand in hand. And one yeah. thing that I've really been trying to get my people on is business credit. So like, yeah. I know, that, you know, personal credit, <laughs> there you go, look, I know that personal credit, um, definitely sometimes it's hard to get it cleaned up and stuff like that, but like, you just go get a fresh LLC and like build it up in 90 days and like really do some phenomenal things, you know what I'm saying? So, um, so I have so many, get a course? yes, no, I'm, and I, I'm not like, you can get cars, you can get houses, you can yeah, get credit on mills. Yes, yeah, so it's definitely. I need to get my business credit better. I'm going to call you. <laughs> yes, so, um, so like I said, that is definitely something um, that I, you know, have been working on or, or th you know, talking about in the works of potentially, you know, doing a podcast, something like that. 
you know, financial literacy for black and brown people because, you know, they have all the secrets. It's time for us to wake up and, you know, get to it because it it this like it's no reason why we should all be making six figures like seriously and it the, there's so much available but mm-hmm. it's just a lack of knowledge and yeah. and one thing that i realized uh you know with the tax academy and just being in this space is like you know it's so much and i have so much to offer but it's like how do you you know give all you know you can't just like just be giving it away so you got to figure out the proper way you know, to facilitate those things. And so that's what I, I have been working on. So Good. thank you guys look for sure. <laughs> for giving me that confirmation of something that I've already been. You are welcome. Yeah. It's meant so to be. How do, so how do people get involved into your tax academy? Um, how, do you, how does it work? What is the payment structure, the selection process, all of that? Okay, so I can actually pretty much train anybody that's <laughs> how to do taxes unless you know unless you have some mental capacities that ain't functioning correctly like you know pretty much anybody who can know how to work a computer know how to you know talk and and read you know they can pretty much join the tax academy okay so um how it works is uh it there obviously there's a fee so you just you know pay your registration fee the program is a hundred percent online. So you get your own username and password to your portal. You can log in at your own pace and do the classes at your own pace. And what we have done is we've paired a, a Facebook group to go with the online instruction. So that way you're not bombarded and overwhelmed. Cause I know sometimes people log in like, where do I start? What do I do? You know, where I go first? Are they concentrating on this? And really you should be doing that. So what we do is we take six months and we guide you through the port, you know, okay, so month one, we're going to be focused on this month two, we're going to focus on this, so on and so forth. So literally we handhold you step by step. And then once, once we're done, um, you're actually in the tax season. So you're in the next tax season. So you get to implement everything that we've taught you train. It's not something you got to wait a whole year, two years, like, Literally after six months, you're like right into the tax season in your bag, getting it on and doing what you do. Okay. So okay. to answer your question, um, you just go to the website, it's flatfeetaxacademy.com. You go ahead and get signed up. And then basically we onboard you. You get immediate access to the courses. And then from that point, like I said, you just wait till we the group goes live in August. And so at that point, we'll start guiding, you know, everybody on you know, where to start and where to begin. Flat, you said flatfeetacademy.com? So it's flatfeetaxacademy.com. F-L-A-T-F-E-E, taxacademy.com. And on that website, you can actually hear other testimonials of people that have been through the course. Um, you know, just more information. Uh, I did a, probably like a 15 to 20 minute video on the whole, just, because a lot of people are familiar with the industry so the tax software you know just things that you'll need in order to be successful you know in the industry so I did a little video that y'all can check that out and then from there decide you know okay okay we on there we we right (laughs) yeah outside (laughs) (laughs) okay Mm -hmm. so before we um so before we wrap up besides the business you know credit and tax what is one thing that you would recommend everyone do or the biggest thing that people miss out on as far as it goes um, to protecting their assets and their taxes? Um, I think the, one of the, biggest, the biggest things is, is it has to, I'm sorry, credit, like credit is like king. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> so credit. And then, you know, uh, I would say another nugget is getting you a life insurance. You know, a lot of people don't know about getting them an index account. So that's a whole nother jewel for another day. So just um, just getting your affairs in order, guys. No more fish plates and things of that nature. But people, <laughs> people don't know that they can borrow from their life insurance. They can leave a legacy for their kids. Um, so that's a big thing as well. So. You said get an index fund? 
it's a it's a it's an index it's called an index uh policy so i i could look hit me up after this i can hook you up with a, a good one of my good friends and look, he can um give you a free consultation but yeah so life insurance credit um you know and then once you get the bag so like if you get your credit right you get funding like what do you do next so you know they got airbnb toro you know um all these great things that you can get into so I just say, you know, get into the bag and then making the right, you know, investment, mm -hmm. the right things with it. That, that's what that's what we on. That's all 2022. Come on, that's what we <laughs> on. The random spoons. <laughs> A random spoon. <laughs> you made me want, mm, curd. Oh my god. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna con well DB's gonna contact you about that and I'll okay, yeah, contact yeah. you about how, how do we contact you? Because I need um, yeah, yeah, okay. So yeah, okay, <laughs> not a problem, not a problem. So um like I said, if you wanna get um more information on the academy, it's flatfeetaxacademy.com. If you want to contact me, um my number is 281-661 three nine seven five that's two eight one six six one three nine seven five so if you're looking for the tax academy you can press extension 702 if you're looking for uh well there's prompts so you can okay. just call the number and depending on what you want because we got so many things going guys so depending right. on what you want you just press the correct thing and you can get us on there if you want to follow me on social media, you can find me at Catherine Mitchell on Facebook or at Miss Cat TV, M S C A T T V on um Instagram. So All yeah, right. there you there you have it. So uh, whoever I'm be like, I don't want to talk to you. Where's Miss Cat? What's your IG? Um, it's Catherine Ms. Mitchell. Uh, so the IG is Miss Cat TV, M S C A T T V, Miss Cat TV. He might send you some DMs though. Watch him because you got to watch out for him. <laughs> DM about, about the tax academy. Yes, yeah, yeah, no tax academy business credit. <laughs> like, but now, nah, seriously, guys, though, seriously, um, you know, I, I definitely appreciate you guys and hope that, you know, hopefully this could bring some awareness. Definitely. Even if people don't want to get the, you know, get into the tax industry, just, you know, stay connected with the knowledge, you know that yes. you could gain, you know, from that. Because you're going to have other avenues open. I already feel it. So then they'll be able to connect yes. you to that. Yes. She's going yes. to credit, she go have a credit education. She's going to have a business <laughs> line education. She's going to teach you about stocks. She <laughs> teach you about hey, I'm, not, I'm not there yet. Then, like, the <laughs> you can always find somebody. You can find right. somebody in the network. The crazy thing is when I was about to start getting into cryptocurrency, now they're saying it's, it's going down. Right. So I'm like, It so, is. Don't do it, girl. Don't do it. It ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Trust me, it ain't going nowhere. So, it's not going anywhere, but it's it's plummeting fast. So you got to go. Trust yeah. me. Got gotcha. you. So it's called so a pandemic. Right. <laughs> pa Y'all gonna stop using the pandemic? It's over. We are back at work. The world is over. Back up. The pandemic is gone. I didn't know somebody had COVID last week. Stop. One person that. See, her, her tax person ain't the only person she, that gets stressed oh. out about her. <laughs> well, keep look, keep okay. sipping at. Keep sipping that drink. You won't drink. <laughs> it's going to all be a blur after a moment. Like, it'll okay. be like, oh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so, um, thank you for coming on the show. But before you go, we always ask our guests, why are you mad? So, we start with happy, we end with mad. So, did anything Ooh. happen today? Anything that just grind your gears? It could have been, you know, your heel broke, it was too hot. Or the traffic, it could be uh, anything. Heel, I, I would just say, you know what? Why I'm mad? I'm mad because y'all sipping and I'm not. That's why mm -hmm. I'm mad. <laughs> a, and I understand why you're mad. <laughs> I'm mad at that. Look, because <laughs> you still at work. Right, get no, money. We oh. gonna get money. <laughs> well, well, thank, thank you, you again. Oh, yeah, Michelle, you can go. Oh, thank you so much for coming on. That's you so are uh, a riot. We loved you. Um, and I now remember you came on here talking about the ESG and the Christmas. Oh, okay. I, you don't even remember us. That I, I'm look, look. Y'all gonna have to forgive <laughs> me first. First of all, I've been staring at this computer since eight a.m. <laughs> I got people hit me up for taxes, and it ain't even we ain't even in tax season no more. <laughs> so. Wow. Okay. 
Like, forgive me, my mind. Oh, it's okay. Like, <laughs> it's like all blurred together. When you but... said that, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember we um, talked about that. I remember it. So, but yeah. we family now. So, yeah. like, it's all good. So, I apologize for the past, but let's walk forward in the future. Cousin. <laughs> that's how my time an inboxer. Cousin. <laughs> Look, Let me I, get that tax info. Remember, you said we family now. Look. So, hey, man, I'm trying to cut ahead in the game. So what's, man. The, what's the real price? What's the price for me? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, that's <laughs> what that opens yourself up to. So, you know what? Nope. We not cousins. <laughs> no black people like a hookup. Oh, oh my God. Lord. Uh, oh, okay. you know, normally it's $40, but for you, $39.95. <laughs> right. For real, $39.95. <laughs> 99. <laughs> yeah. I'm not playing with you. Well, make sure you come back when you open up your other endeavor. Okay. Awesome. It, so. Awesome. And when y'all inbox me, I'm going to invite y'all to this group that I just started. So, kind of a place where I can gather folks and kind of, you know, every now and then go live and drop gems and stuff like that. So, um, I'll definitely invite y'all to the group as well so that way you can stay Thank connected. You. Yes, thank you, thank you. Thank yeah. you. No problem. Good talking to you. Y'all, y'all have a good night. All right. I'm going to get some rest now. Have a good night, y'all. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. That was good. That was good. Yeah, two good guests. I like I'm a cold-ass host. I like Devontae Swing. Devontae Swing. Oh, no. Except his name is Sergio. His name is, uh, his name is Sergio, right? Yes, Sergio. I ain't met a black dude named Sergio, but I mean, hey, you learn something new every day. Okay, gracious. Everything good to you? No, they, uh, Instagram gave me a I know we're still alive, right? I know, but I was like, don't delete my uh, business page because I had said I would knock somebody teeth out. And they, they was like, you can't see it. Why would you put that on your, on your business page? Well, so it was a video, and I forgot that I was logged into my oh, business page, okay. and I commented on it um because this lady, which is it's not even a big deal, but this lady, right. she pulled a Karen. Her friends were having a backyard party, and they had a comedian out. So the comedian was performing. The neighbor came over, walked in the house because people were, you know, coming in the house through the front to the backyard. She walked in and was like, "Y'all need to turn this bleepity bleep off," like cussing the people out. Then she left after she cussed everybody out. Um, the comedian made another joke. She heard him came back, snatched the mic from him. So the owners of the house closed the back door and they were, cause she was trying to leave with the mic and they were like, no. So someone tried to take the mic from her. She slapped the the dude and then hit the, and I said, I would have masked her bleepity bleep teeth down her throat. Like, first of all, you're trespassing because you're not even supposed to be in my property because I didn't invite you here. And for you to have the audacity to, take the mic and like it's you can't do that if you have a disturbance then call the cops like if that's what you felt you needed to do because they were making noise call the cops you don't go to someone's house because if they would have beat her behind she would have been playing victim mode but you're trespassing you're not supposed to be here so i think whenever i think whenever white people white women begin to caring all mm-hmm. black people should just gather around and just start going caring caring <laughs> caring and like they are like so they are like fucking know. snap. They're like they're like snap. Like oh shit, I am being one. Like they're like like no, chill, no. Aaron. No, they get well, madder actually. Like they. Oh, well, like that, that didn't even be. I didn't be more entertaining. It's like you're just do that shit. Shut the fuck up, Karen. Okay, mm-hmm. so that's why I have backyard boogies with my gun on my hip over here. If you want to. Mm-hmm. My the house is open, or you want to come to the back? Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. we both about to be surprised. Right, mm-hmm. don't come over here. Like, who do you think you are? Okay, so we have a little bit. Yeah, send me that video to you. With the lady? Yeah. Y'all send it to you. Um, yeah. Okay, so this, so today, um, I wanted all the guys to be here. We'll kind of talk, talk about it a little bit more next week, a little bit. But the topic was unrealistic realities. So I follow Kendra G Media on um, Instagram. And she is like, to me, she's like, She's not like Kevin Kevin Samuels as far as her being like harsh in her delivery, but she's like an equal opportunity um, person. Like she has guys on there who are unrealistic as hell. She has women on there who are unrealistic. Like she just kind of be like, 
are you are you okay? Because like you you out here in left field, and I need you to come back to the center, like center yourself. So um, the last couple of days, she's had these women, and and I'm definitely not saying that look should equate to the type of person that you get, but I also feel like you need to stay in your range. I've said this before. If you're like a strong four, you can't date a five. Like you can only go to like a three, a four, and a under. Like you can go four and under. You can't skip up to five. Like you got to stay where you at. If a five accepts you, that's fine. If you are at eight, you can't fast forward to a 10. You got to stay in the eight range to <laughs> the seven and under. So I'm going to play this video and then I'm going to put it in the link so you guys can hear this conversation. Then we'll kind of go into the topic. So, um, somebody that enjoys being a provider. Um, I was taken care of, I'm taken care of, um, even after I left my husband, I have my parents, um, they helped me, so it's just like I'm used to a certain lifestyle, so I like men who enjoy being providers. So, does he have to make a certain amount of money? Six figures or then? Everybody's saying, but like, it's okay, um, if you can't afford it, it's all right, and since your standards are low, that's okay as well. But um, I like what I like. I've been provided for before outside of my ex husband. Um, none of the men that have taken me out or have purchased cars for me or anything in my life have ever complained. Uh, my my ex boyfriend took me and my daughters on trips the entire year because it's COVID and they were going to school online. So it's like I'm not new to this, I'm new to this. So all you should like, I'm gonna need all y'all to pipe down and raise your standards and stop being like asking for too much. You're asking for too little. Kind of okay, so one? that's one. Let me let me give you one more, and then we'll go into the topic. Um, this is Kim Houston, Texas, thirty-five. She's from Houston. Houston. <laughs> Independent doctor, also a security company to adopt the children. Do you have an appearance requirement? I am short, so I like taller guys. She's a gremlin. I'm five A gremlin. Five three would be good. No, I need somebody to respond to her. You're a gremlin. At least five nine or five three, you said. Yes. She's a Furby. Yes. Stop, Tia. Like at least two hundred thousand a year. Are you on drugs? <laughs> I own two companies, <laughs> so I I make no money. So I need somebody who can keep up with me. Look at Kendra. Kendra never said that. Kendra said I'm on No. Kendra didn't say that. In my right mind, same mind. Kendra still didn't say that. This is Cam Houston, Texas 35. She said, are you on drugs? Kendra, Kendra's screen froze, but it didn't freeze. Like, she just. So. So. Let's dive but into. Hold on, let me put these really quick into the. Uh, you gotta send it to her. Um, she was thirty-five. The gremlin, yeah, the gremlin was thirty-five. Come on, man. I'm not calling her. That. <laughs> okay, that's fine. You don't have to. I, I call her. She looked forty-six. Kind of guy, right? She looks like a gremlin. Like if you feed her after midnight, she's gonna turn into a gremlin. Uh uh Um. Okay, so I put them both in the. Well, it's not very nice. It, what she said was, what she scary. said. Her personality wasn't nice. So unnice begets unniceness. That's just what it is. So back to to unrealistic realities. Oh um, yeah, I be watching her. Oh yeah. Yeah, you, I'm sure you've seen Ken, Kendra before. Kendra. Yeah, I've seen her a couple times. Yeah. Um. So you, everyone knows Kevin Samuels. Uh, had an untimely passing. Uh, I can't remember what day it was that he passed away. Thursday, um, I believe. Thursday. Okay. Um, yeah. Was it okay? Cinco de Mayo. Uh, I did see some people making light of him passing. I will never make light of anybody passing. I don't think that that's funny at all. Um, regardless if I agreed with what he said or how he was dis disrespectful to women, I don't think it's it's and men. Cool. Yeah. Well, I, I never heard him make um any comments about men. I did hear him make comments about women, but people said that he did. I just I personally never heard any. Um, I, I think that there were oftentimes validity and what he said I just didn't like his delivery like I don't like how he spoke to women but on the flip side women called into like why are you calling into the show like I'm not going to call in to have him <laughs> berate me and belittle me and talk down to me that doesn't make any sense at all so um but I, I get what he was saying like these women 
to me are an example of the type of things that he would speak on. So the first woman, I don't know what the rest of her body looks like, but just physicality wise, a man that makes $200,000 plus a year is not going to talk to you. Like he's not going to there. I don't, you, you may look like a Coca-Cola bottle from the neck down, but your face looks like a gremlin. Your hair is not even combed. So to me, for a woman who makes a certain amount of money, who wants a man that makes X, Y, and Z, most of the time, those women take care of themselves and they attract a certain type of man. So it just sounds asinine that you are saying you want a man that makes 200,000 plus, you are not going to accept less than that. If you claim you have two businesses, just because you have two businesses doesn't mean that you make $200,000. I, I have two businesses. I don't make $200,000 a year. That doesn't mean anything. So that does not matter. Like that's That's the point that I was going to make also, because I wondered if that is the world that you live in, if you make that much money, you function in a different environment than most right. other people. And so if that is what you are around, then right. yeah, you catch fish in the right. sea where you're fishing. Right. And so if you fish in a 200K bond, sea, then right. okay, that makes sense. But if- You are gonna look like 200K though. But that's not your life. That's not- becomes a little bit more difficult because where are you going to meet these people that's like the single right. woman that stays in her house and don't ever go nowhere and who you think gonna find you uh the amazon man right like, jesus not gonna just drop him through your chimney like santa claus it's not gonna happen <laughs> you don't go outside you don't go outside. so you know <laughs> yeah that that was a little that was a reach for her then the other chick she has four kids and that's the one with the long hair the one with the the, the I couldn't really hear her re- yeah. couldn't really tell if she's a man or a woman so she has four kids um again stop <laughs> like stop, i have like, a friend that had four kids and got remarried and had two more and party of well eight it depends on what she looks like kids. and it depends on the man but if a man that is top tier of what you're looking a uh, quotation fingers and I hate this word a high value man is probably not really seeking after a chick that got four kids that look like her so I'm just right. saying she that was they're married. Not I think because men are physical and so yeah if you a bad chick that got four kids and and you on your game then yes but if it's a if it's a regular Joe Blow dude then yeah but if it's a dude that don't got no kids got his stuff together successful on businesses he's not checking for the chick with four kids he's not not for the I, I don't I think it matters if it's um if you're a married ex-husband type what the situation is around the four kids as you know if you just got four kids with him 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 oh she with her daddy and he know, with his daddy no man. none of my homeboys that I know that make bread bread I don't care if it was from a marriage or not they not checking for no chick with four kids especially if they got one kid they not they're not about to take all that in Cause that's more money they got to put out there. I mean, to be your man, like if you made a hundred fifty, two hundred thousand dollars, and the chick said she was married before she got four kids, you checking for her? Cause there's tons of women that don't have that. Exactly. What that? What that, that is? <laughs> You'll smash so, her, yeah. But, okay. but as far as nah. marrying her and wiping her up, no, no, like that's no, no. I mean, you, you got uh, people got to stay within their realm, you know, and that's that's. A lot of people just don't have the, I think people like that just don't date often. And so mm. they just are, or, or, or naive to the fact of what's going on in this world. Um, it's competition everywhere. So I know when I was single, I don't know about you guys, but I tried to make myself um, worthy of being competitive. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like I took care of myself. Yes. I, I, I make sure that I learned how to be sociable and um, keep up a conversation and learn the do's and don'ts of, of, of women, men, and interacting, just normal everyday life, you know what I'm saying? So yes. you can't sit here and be like, okay, I'm going to be out here dating. And, I, and I, but, you know, also, I, I didn't learn how to, to uh, I didn't work on myself first outside appearance, but I got to work on myself mentally. But as later on, I became to work on myself mentally. That's also important as well. So, like, when you saying stupid shit like that, you ain't worked on yourself. Because yeah. you don't fucking know what's going on. You haven't been out there, so you're naive. You're just talking out the side of your fucking neck. 
Yeah. It don't make no sense, bro. Like, how you gonna see it and say you want a man with this? I don't want a man with no kids, but you got three. Right. Even a guy, I don't want a girl with kids, but you got six. Right. Like, bro, you use a fucking idiot, bro. Like, okay. Like, I no, it don't say that, that have kids too. Like, how? <laughs> like, like I can understand a, a single woman who is not being like is she it's okay, she don't make a lot of money, but she still make money. She take care of herself and she said, I don't want a man with kids because I don't have kids. Okay, then she has that right. Right. She has that right because right. that's what she is. Right. And I'm not, not I'm not saying now nah, I'm not gonna say it's smart because you're you're um you're cutting you're cutting your shit to a third, you know what I'm saying? Especially if you're older in our age. So you know, you, you just gotta be able to I don't know what the fuck going on with people, excuse me, I'm about to burp, but I don't know what the fuck going on with some people. That that shit don't make no motherfucking sense to be that naive. Like it really makes no sense. And that's so, from the men that have no kids that are our age. I'm just going to put that out there. Right, right. Like, there are tons of people that, you know, kind of did career first and then kind of just waited. But when I hear God say that, I'm like, no, that's not. There's a lot of Black men who don't have kids. I mean, yes, you know, not the men who, who do, but there are tons. I have, like, five homeboys that are successful, no kids. Right. I'm just trying to figure out when did six figures become the magic point for to me that this is a good guy or a good catch or the standard. So and money doesn't I make you a good catch, don't, don't uh, really, uh, okay. well money alone does not. Right, right. I so I just so I, I was at a house shindig um at the end of the night on Thursday, single de Mayo, and we were standing around talking and someone announced that Kevin Samuels died. And I was like, whoa, like what? Mm-hmm. And then, so that began, you know, this conversation and, you know, some of the guys were like, oh yeah, you know, that's a, a huge loss. Like, okay. And then, you know, some of the girls were um, respectful, but still discussing his tackiness. And so then it just kind of started a conversation about, you know, when you're living right or not living right and whether, you know, his sexuality, blah, 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 yada, yada, spun into the topic of money. And so um, we just started to talk about that. Like one of the guys used me as an example. He was like, you have a lot of male friends that have tons of money. And he was like, but every girl can't have that dude. And I said, well, yes, she can. She just is going to share him with other people. So yeah, she can, you know, if you're willing to (laughs) accept, but that's these guys, every guy that has money is not a hundred percent tacky and out there like that. But the the crew that I know kind of is but then beyond that it's like you want them simply for their finances because otherwise he is a whole jerk like I struggle to find any other redeeming qualities right so this whole six figures is not your get out of jail card Right. Well, I mean, I don't think I don't think it's a, it's a get out of free, get out of free jail car. It may be to the point that they see that as some type of stability, you know. Of course, I mean, y'all women, you know, you don't want to deal with a man that's not stable, right? Six figures, you know what? Not you can have all the money in the world. I mean, but it's a start, though. To you, it's a start, no, right? It's not so because stressed, you don't know. Your hair to... falling out and your skin, you got boils because you can't sleep. No, no, no. no. Okay, okay. But I'm I know, just saying. I know someone who makes fifty thousand dollars. As and he manages that as if it's a hundred thousand because okay. he doesn't have a lot okay. of debt. He yeah, has an eight hundred credit score. He right, owns right. his own home. Like right. he's good. I right. know someone who makes one hundred eighty thousand dollars and he eats ramen noodles because he lives above his means. So it okay. again, it depends okay. on the you know the maturity of the person. Right. So it sounds good. And and again, I think I talked about this on the show. I did research on this. There there is a small percentage of people who make a hundred thousand dollars a year. So I'm so tired of people saying that they make this and they make it sounds good, um, but everybody does not make a hundred thousand dollars a year. When you know what, everyone keeps also- saying that I just laugh at them because and even if you even if your income says that you're not taking home, you probably Thank not taking you. home a hundred thousand dollars. So it you. sounds good. You don't bring home a hundred thousand dollars, you make it, you don't bring it home, brother. Shut right. up. So stop right, come 72. On. Damn. Right, you, you're right. You're gonna make like seven, and that there's nothing wrong with that. It just and I and the people who I know that constantly say that they make a hundred thousand, they're so flashy and and out and all out there. You don't even walk like you make a hundred thousand dollars because I could tell I know a hundred thousand dollar 
lifestyle based off of how you talk and move, you ain't even exhibiting that. You're you're a strong seventy thousand dollar, maybe sixty, and that's okay. Just it's okay. <laughs> it is literally I I cringe every time I hear someone say six figures. Like shut up, please shut up, shut up. Yeah, because a hundred and one and nine hundred and ninety nine is still six. Right to them, and after taxes, each twenty six percent of that you are not making. <laughs> it, it, let's, it let's, really can we can we talk about the Kevin Samuel thing a little bit? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Because go ahead. Uh, I kind of feel like that, you know, I, I'm, I agree that that um, he's his his um his delivery can be extremely tacky and disrespectful at times. Like I'm 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 like I'm like with every guy. Well, not every guy, but some guys that I've seen. Some of his stuff he said was true. Some of what he said was was trash as fuck. Yes, you know, agree, you know what I'm saying? But he didn't become popular. We can both agree with this, right? Oh, we can all agree until he started bashing women. Yes. But before women, he was also bashing men. I do have. I, look- I've never heard. That's what I'm saying. I've never heard him yeah. bash women. I would have to look up some of his. You have. I got, a little, I got a little clip if you want to. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to check? Check it yeah, out. Just give me one it. moment if I can find it. Uh, and let me play it. I got to turn it up. Hold on. What would you rank yourself on a scale from one to ten? How tall are you? Five ten. Five ten. How much do you weigh? Two what? Depending on the day. Between two eighty to two eighty five. So you're the day. Yeah. <laughs> you pick a five foot ten, almost three hundred pound dude. How much money you make? Like four hundred every two weeks. Four, so you make four, so you make four hundred every two weeks. So you make eight hundred a month. You make uh, less than ten thousand dollars. Okay. Like, how many twenty well, year olds? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Dude, I was a twenty year old. And I was making far more money than that. In the eighties, a minimum wage was three thirty five an hour. So I don't need to hear it. Ooh, I'm right. Got a big dick. Huh? You have a big dick? I mean, it's above average. I ain't no Ron Jeremy. No, 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 no. I asked you if you had a big dick. I just said it was above average. I don't know what that is. Really. Uh, nigga, you know if you got a big dick or not. Stop <laughs> bullshit. Bullshit. Dude, whether they got a big dick. I know I got a big dick. Oh, you don't know? <laughs> That's the point. You don't have a big dick. You don't have a big wallet. You're a big, you're a fat dude. <laughs> You got a lot of nerve thinking you should get shoes and sit with a five foot ten and three hundred pounds, making less than a thousand dollars a month at twenty years old. And women should approach you. What they get? They don't even get a big thing. A lot of different coaches. <laughs> ah, oh my god! I've never hey. heard that. Hey, oh, wow. bro, he used to go in on niggas. I watched some old episodes. He was I going in. Okay. Oh, nigga. I was like, yo, that is okay. fucked up. But like, men thought like that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? I'm, I was never one of those guys that <laughs> looked at a, at, a, at, a, at a model or a video. I was like, you know what? Hmm, I would love to date her. No. Why? I don't want that. I don't want them problems. Like, so it, it just, Did you feel like mind. she was out of your league or just because? I knew she was oh, out of my league. Uh, okay. <laughs> what you mean? I, I wasn't stupid. <laughs> I want a rapper. <laughs> I was trying to be one, but I mean, no. You know, one plus one don't equal don't equal six. <laughs> like you gotta sit here and like look at yourself and know like it's pretty much a good chance I'm not gonna get one of those. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, don't. <laughs> Come on, man. I mean, you made my head itch. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, like you got you got to be smarter than that. You got to be true. smarter than that. Like that's really, true. like, come on, man. I agree. People are really unrealistic. They really are. Yeah. Y'all remember that? Was that in Living Color? They had that uh that thing like lower expectations. Yeah. Was that in Living Color? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that to be so funny, dog. Oh my god. So, do you feel that like is. social media plays a part in people having these unrealistic expectations because all these filters and people are more accessible online and they're able to create this fantasy life yeah. and world? I think people don't live in reality at all. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, you know, social media is the highlight reel. 
Yeah. You only yeah. put the moment, the one off chance that you had the biggest, best, greatest blast experience. You could have been paying for it, not me. That's the one thing that I'm going to put on there. And then the next time something like that happens, that's the next thing I'm going to put on there. So I'm only going to live and show the best of the best. And that creates a false reality. I yeah. mean, yeah. do it for the gram. Stage for Facebook. You have a whole photo shoot in a full private plane. Like everybody got the same picture with the same backdrop. Like, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's you think you're trying to keep up with everybody else, but yeah. everybody's yeah. looking fake. Yeah. You know what? I feel like I feel like a good way to like gauge your dating average is to look at who your friends are. Look at your 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 salary and just around your peers because you're going to hang with the people that make some more similar the amount of money that you make. Especially at our age, maybe a little bit different in your 20s, you know. But you have to look at your peers. That's the type of women or the type of men you should date. You're not going to go out and find a motherfucker in Hollywood and expect to date her. You're not going to find an actress. You're not going to date a mom. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Unless you just got you a sugar mama and then they ain't even real. She's from your hometown and y'all went to high school together. <laughs> she right. came back to visit. And you always had a crush on each other. No, I had this conversation with a friend of mine recently, and she was talking about um, she lives in New York City and Mm -hmm. has a big time job. And she was talking about some of the women that, you know, she's connected with there and how superficial it can be. And, you know, it's about money and status. And, oh, what do you do? And I said, but you have to think about this. I was like, for the the sandbox that you're playing in now, I was like, could y'all realistically have a broke friend? And she thought about it and she was like, yeah, people are nice. I said, no, because y'all go to, you know, Ruth Chris, like some people go to Applebee's Burger King or yeah. Right, and right. I was like, y'all go there for lunch three, four times a week. Mm-hmm. That's lunch for y'all. Or we were working late. And so we just stopped by to have right. something before this big fancy event. And I'm right. like, that's not just a regular people meal. And y'all exactly. order bottles of wine and a gajillion appetizers before you think about what you're going to eat for for dinner and then every dessert on the menu just so everybody can have a spoon right. and then y'all split the bill and everybody bill is four or five hundred dollars three and four times a week you know and so when right. you say you're where you're functioning and where you're living and in your world that's mm-hmm. the world that you live in you probably will meet people in that world if that's not the you live in, it Absolutely. becomes a little harder and you are so, now the exception, not the rule. So my thought person, that's that's a to me, that's a shallow mentality of thinking. I have friends who don't make as much as me. And if they can't afford to go to those places, then I won't invite them, them to there, but that doesn't take away the value of who they are as a person because they can't go well, to but, you're, but you're making her point though. You're making her point though. Too. I, I'm still gonna be point. their friend, but I'm still okay. gonna be their friend. I agree with you. The point right. I agree, I agree on that. Michelle just said is why why are you why would you those aren't your friends? Like all your friends don't oh. have to. I just, I feel like that when you start getting into the money thing, that's when people get big headed, like, because you make a certain amount of money, you're better than the next person. No, you can have, I have a friend that doesn't make money at all. She has three kids. She can't afford to go do things, but we still have a great friendship. Yes, she can't travel, but I value her opinions. I value her conversations. I We have a, a, a amazing friendship, but yeah, I can't tell her come with us to go to Belize on a vacation she can't afford to do that but i'm not going to discredit her as a friend and a person because she can't afford to go do super I don't think she made that right. just to be clear i'm not saying that that's everybody that that doesn't like. have any money that's not what i'm saying but what i am saying is exactly what you said is they can't do what you do and so that doesn't take away they, the value of them as a person but if if you work downtown and every day after work you go eat and you do stuff the people that you're probably going to end up doing that with are people who can afford that and so that that's what I'm saying when it comes. And yeah. they're good people because they can afford to go to Ruth Chris afterwards. So what I said is she's new and the people that she's been hanging around with, and that's how it's kind of turned into. And so she's meeting people in that circle because that's the sandbox that she's playing in. Right. And right. that's the point. So when we start talking right. about the chick that got the two businesses that couldn't even get her plats, you know, parted straight and done, 
So now what sandbox is she playing in and who is she meeting? So to DB's point, your, your friends and the people that you're interacting with. So, I mean, I know you're thinking about friends as in best friends and all that. And I'm just thinking about social circle in general. But your I guess social I'm just looking at it because opens you up to different le- there's levels to this. True, but, but usually your social well, circle is gonna is gonna hang with like minded people and, and be in that same type like-minded of like minded doesn't necessarily well, mean, I mean, that's, I, that's, that's a bad one. And wrong. I think what I'm just saying is we live in a world now and it's, it's showing in this conversation where people equate money to greatness, like oh well, these are great. This is a great social circle because they have money. That doesn't make it a great social circle because they can earn exactly. right. money. Like, and that's right. the world you live in now because like Michelle said, you got mm-hmm. fake book and everybody's posting the best of everything on fake book. So y'all look like y'all pop because y'all eat. And Ruth Chris ain't even a popping place. So to me, Ruth Chris is average at best. Like, so if you're going to Ruth Chris and spending $400, okay, cool. We got Ruth Chris here. Like that ain't no, that ain't to me a, a five-star restaurant. It's I've seen an average $400 meal. And that's you're spending that at Ruth Chris. So that's, I mean, there are tons of places in New York. I've never had an average $400 meal to you. Huh? That's even I've never that, had an average a, $400. Even that, that's a are you really that you go there. Like, some people like go to, some people so go like to like McDonald's. Me. McDonald's ain't the greatest thing, but it's it'll do. That's what is there. They eat, they get full, whatever. Everybody, did just, everybody caps all the time. We live in a world of capping. Like everyone wants to be up here. And sometimes that was what unrealistic realities, like pull yourself back down. If you make money, cool. If you don't, cool. Like everybody is not ballerific. Everybody, if you have friends that make money, cool. You probably have friends that don't make money. We all, ain't nobody better than nobody. No, no, absolutely not. Not because of money. But I'm saying usually I'm going to speak on dating terms. I don't know about the friendships y'all talking about. They be kind of tend. I don't of, know who I don't know who the person Michelle is talking about at all. I don't know. We kind of like tilted a little I'm bit. Saying, I'm thinking like dating. Because okay. I thought we were talking like, about dating too. Downstairs at the office. office. I'm like, it's I'm by the office. office. That's where we going. Okay. <laughs> but we go there five, four or five times a week. Like the who? To me, that's I said. It's just the place that's the closest to the office. You know, they oh. can just walk downstairs and go to it. Right. But what right. I'm saying is. Again, that's not normal for everybody. There's levels right. to this. And so you, when you, earlier y'all talked about being in your, if you were four, you were four. If you were five, you were five and you stay within that zone. And I think that sometimes in social settings and social, social situations, that also is similar. Because well, I'm, I'm saying have, that like, sometimes you can teeter Maybe a, a four and a five can meet, you know, yeah. whatever, you know. I'm saying you're just not going from a four to a 19, you know what I'm saying? Like, hold on, wait you're, not, you know? you're not with Halle Berry. Halle Berry not yeah, like, wait a minute, nigga, how are you dating her? You know, I don't Jenna know. Jenna Jackson you know. talked to um, Jermaine Dupree, but he had money, but his face was like a negative one. But, <laughs> okay, what? <laughs> But I'm women, sorry. but women are not just attracted to to, to a man's face. Y'all True. attracted to attitude, how he treats you, how he puts you on a pedestal. It's more than just attraction with y'all. Swag so, goes on the way, right? Swagger, and so it, it and and maybe even his his so called um power. Yes, you know, you know he's, power definitely, right? You know, so I mean that, and you know, she's a she's a Jackson. Her brother had power, so she may have uh-huh. seen some of whatever he had. In him, so it ain't just about looks with women. Now, men, True. that's different. You know, we can go. We'll, we'll, we'll do. We'll be a twenty, and we'll date a two. But she got that ass. You know what I'm saying? So you know that's how they. That's how men are. You know what I'm saying? Like, what she? Hey, what that thing look like? Oh, well, she till I say hi. You know, <laughs> I'm forced because you know like, women. Women are more mental. Yes. Okay, so the mental. The cause look, look at my ugly ass. You know, I get pretty women. You know what I'm saying? It's like they're more attracted to the. The um the person the, the character the charm such things like that am I right I you make me laugh you know what I'm saying I don't know I, had, I, I lost that shit three weeks ago but uh what you lost charm the charm I lost the charm oh, how did you so, lose charm three weeks ago I don't know I'm just oh. but oh. that's what women are attracted to that's what I'm saying so it's not always about the looks but um <laughs> man we're see man we gotta see. You definitely yeah, are. Men that. are definitely yeah. physical. They are definitely, definitely physical. I agree. And like, yeah. like, do y'all really try to deep, like, think, like, deeply dive into that? Why is it like that? That's weird. But I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of want to get into that, but I don't want to get into. It. I don't. I don't think. I think. I think the role that women see men in are normally like leaders, providers. So that is a role of power. So you will be attracted to that. 
and men I don't know why you guys are attracted to I mean women are are, are, are supposed to be beautiful and, and pretty flowers and put on these pedestals that you guys worship and and chase after so and believe um, it or not men men my I know men I'm around men all the time men worship women they do men I I don't know if that's a secret but men, men, black men and white men, span, yeah, you don't matter the color. They worship women. And like, uh, but y'all are so appealing to men that you just don't even know. Like really, y'all really have all the power. Seriously. And yeah, definitely. Women just don't know yeah. how sometimes don't know how to use it, but I definitely agree with that. Like they don't, we don't Absolutely. realize the power that we have. Absolutely. Yeah. Women, in my personal opinion, I'm getting off the subject a little bit is to drink excuse me i, I believe that when i when i say when i say god i think of a woman hmm. like real talk okay look at you in life because y'all create life and y'all bring life true I mean, we help but we can't bring it in here you know what i'm saying you can't that chromosome right. just sits there and that's it after the chromosomes are released y'all done right and science I think women, you even beyond that i think women whatever men give women take incubate and turn it into something more Absolutely. and so if you're pouring love and kindness and caringness she's going to take that incubate it and give and radiate a whole sunshine yes. and if you give her the blues she's going to take gonna that you hell. so it's, <laughs> it's going from here to here you took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> y'all turn, so a, y'all turn, a, uh, y'all turn a, a house into a home, like real talk. And you know, we we provide the home. I mean, we provide the the, the house. You make y'all it into a home. Y'all yeah, used to. Well, I mean, you know, and now you guys can. You know, you guys can. But, 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 but it kind of works both ways. If you think about this. You can meet a guy and say, let's say T is a twenty. You can meet a seventeen. And he turns your your house into a home because he comes into your home, whatever, and then y'all multiply. You know what I'm saying? So it works both ways. Maybe I'm going too deep. Maybe it's a drink. Let's get a drink. The man makes the house a home. I've never, I mean, I'm not saying I've never heard that, but I no, no, no. I'm not I'm not saying that he doesn't make, but when he comes, he's added to your house. Cause like you said, a man, um, we we don't like we we provide the house, but now these days women can provide the house. So we come into your house, and then with us being together, it becomes a home. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. So there's a duality there, like everybody. Absolutely, there. absolutely, there's a duality there. Absolutely, big word, okay. big word. I mean, you write that down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey man, this is this has been great. I got like I, I like I like the dynamics of relationships because I feel like we are like. With relationships, it makes everything moves forward. Like yeah. I, it's yeah. unexplainable. Like real yeah. talk. Yeah, and, and men and women think totally different. That mm-hmm. the way men process, the way men think, and women like we we're just two totally different big creatures. And um, finding a common ground should be easy, but it's not because oftentimes every side wants to be right, and so that's where you get into the bantering and the men versus women. I noticed last week I put a post up and um it wasn't I don't bash men on my post normally also like I, I don't I don't come out and be like men suck I hate men right, like, right. Blah, blah, blah. like I normally right. don't and so I made a post and then the guy was like yeah because women and I was like ah, ah, ah. I, th- I did not stay this is not a man versus woman this can happen on both sides of the fence like men can do this and also women he's like but women okay and I was like and this this is the example of what I'm talking about like there's always like <laughs> It's always right. like a quick thing to be like men versus women all the time. It's, and the same with women. Men are like that because we're so quick to want to solve the problem. Like we want to, like we see the issue there mm. and <clears throat> we want to just, okay, you have this issue, let's solve it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But <laughs> you as the woman, y'all want to know, okay, it's the issue. Why is this issue here? Yes. How did it dissect create it? it? Like y'all want to totally dissect it. No, 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 no. Yeah. I ain't got time for this shit. I want to solve this shit. I, I'm a man. Let me solve this. I know you got this problem, baby. Let me solve your problem. Like I want to be your problem solver. I ain't got time. I know what happened. It's here. Women don't like. Yeah, sometimes women yeah. don't like that because if you don't yeah. dissect it, sometimes you'll make the same mistake again, depending exactly. on what it is. So but you're a man able doesn't to, like break it we down. Don't, 
Yeah, right. and then we like, you don't okay, think that we, we yeah. went through this already. And then the dude's like, no, because they, they're not cognizant that, because they didn't break it down. They just fixed it. So you're like, okay, we, we keep having this repeat thing. So then now you frustrated because you're like, damn, I'm trying to solve the problem. And the woman is frustrated. She's like, damn, you're not paying attention because we already had this same problem. Exactly. And you keep doing the same shit. And so everybody's mad. <laughs> So, so now, now you know when, when you date your guy, when you're with your boyfriend, you know how he thinks. He just yeah. wants to, he just wants to um protect, meaning uh or or or, or fix yes. manage. Yes. You know, yes. not, I don't I don't want to say like you know, conquer, because that's not where you are, you know. I don't want to yeah. conquer my wife, but I want to fix your issue right so we can move forward. Type of piece so you can move forward. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's but, true. That's dope. I, I, I kind of feel like, man, y'all, y'all deep, y'all think so deeply. I'm like, man, oh my God. We, women are are deep thinkers. Yes, yeah. definitely. Yeah, because y'all be over here. Y'all don't listen well sometimes either. Like, huh? <laughs> like y'all don't listen huh? well either. Listening, huh? right? Be like, I just said. I know. How you didn't hear that? I just. Huh? Said. <laughs> I just, I just hoop and play Madden. Huh? I just hoop and play Madden. <laughs> <laughs> right, you want you require me to think too and yeah, listen. Oh no, that's too much. I can't. <laughs> Hold on, you just said I hoop and play Madden. I just hoop and play Madden. That's it. <laughs> Come I on, man. Don't cheat us. Don't yeah. make us like like that. Come on, man. We live in. Oh, I was talking. I, I literally was talking about me. That's what I was. Oh. <laughs> How about you? But you should have said kickball. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, it's almost 9 30. So we're gonna wrap our little show up. We had a good show today. The guests were good again. Shout out to Sergio um and his album. And he will be at uh, I don't know where his listening party is tomorrow, but I know he'll be at uh the Greasy Spoon in Pearland uh on Thursday. Thursday. Um, yeah. If you so, DM him the first three people at DM for the invite to the listening party tomorrow. Yes. So make sure you said you listen to Happy Hour TMS's show. Um, and then Miss Katz, she has our tax preparation business. Um, I put the link in our uh, feed for the show below if you want to contact her. If you have tax questions or if you're interested in doing taxes for next year, like she said, the program is six months, but then it'll parlay right into tax season where you can actively use the skills that you learn. So you're not going to lose it like you're, you're just actively going to the season and start doing taxes. So that sounds like a, a good thing, too. So that's dope. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so let's uh, say why we are mad. Does something bother you today? Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sure I know. So I have, I mean, I, the first one, I'm just not going to go into a whole lot of details, but I'm just really mad at people who hurt children, and that's that. But then the other thing, um, so yesterday I had to run a couple of errands, and I went to the Bank of America ATM right, yeah um on OST right at Scott mm -hmm. and so and I needed to deposit a check it was like $21 check but I've been riding around with it forever because it was like it was only $21 but I'm mm -hmm. like let me put this in here before the 90 days is up and now I'm cashing no more you know right and so I go to deposit it and then I was like you know I should just have a little pocket change anyway and so I was like I'm gonna get $20 and I was like let me get $40 because you know so I don't have to ask nobody to do something strange for $40. So get $40. <laughs> That's the joke. What? Um, right. Some people talking about doing stuff for $40. Like get $40. Right. Okay, okay. Yeah, so okay. I was just going to give me a little hot $40. And I received an error message. And it was not a valid amount. And I go again and I look and I read. Do y'all know that this ATM has the nerve to tell you that you can only pull out money in increments of hundreds? What? One. On OST I, and Scott? I've never OST heard of that. And Scott. Really? This thing said, I put in 40 invalid amount, 20 invalid amount. And then there's a thing on the bottom that says increments of hundreds. So you know how a lot of times, like the most used, and it'll show you like 40, 80, 60, 300, or whatever. You just hit a button. Right. It literally only offers 100, 200, 300, 400 other amounts. Up to eight hundred, you can't even get. What area? You, you were on OST. OST is Scott. This Bank of America. Man, let right me find all the niggas over there getting money. 
Right. Is that a gentrification oh, area? Increments. Not an OSC has got it. Eh? Oh, I don't, you know, I'm geographic. Coming for that area, yeah. But why is it that I can only get money out of my account from the automated teller machine for which the drive through ain't open and it's at increments of That's 100. That's crazy. Why? I would hit one zero. As soon as I hit that other zero, my shit was saying, eh. Insufficient funds. Try again. I, I, literally, <laughs> I literally just drove off. I was like, you yeah, got that's it. crazy. I just drove off. But did you cash your check? Wow. I just deposited. So okay. they took my little $21 check and I didn't get any pocket change. That's crazy. That's wow. Crazy. Like, I don't want to have $100 in cash. I just want right. just a couple of dollars. I just want a couple of dollars. Like, who wants a hundred? Okay. What was over there getting shmoney? Right. Really? Wow. Hmm. Um, All right, DB. Why am I? I'm not. Why, why am I mad? Uh, I'm mad because uh, T didn't send me the uh, code, but uh, and I'm, and I'm also code. mad because the code to the uh, lock to lock in it's the lock. Nigga, it's the same. Anyway, code. and I'm also mad. It's, it's my it's my it's my turn to talk. Let me talk. And it's I'll, my. And it's, I'll push your ass on mute. You won't be saying nothing. <laughs> I was you, I hang up. You ain't lying. I don't want. <laughs> Wait, I'll block you from joining. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I'm not really. Oh, let me see. I'm not really mad. I'm, I'm not really mad at that. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of mad. I'm, I guess I'm mad because my goddamn son quit his job and didn't tell me he was quitting his job. I guess oh. I am. Mad at that. Yeah. I'm like, why did you quit your job? Oh, you want to work there no more? Oh, no. No. I mean, does he have another job lined up? No, he played football. And he getting quiet. He do a lot of stuff. He do a lot of stuff. So that's you know, a conversation, he, though. He makes you know, I already, already had it. I already had it. Oh, okay. So you you can't just you know quit yeah. it. Let people know in advance and be professional. Right. right. Whatever. He learned. He learned. Oh, I didn't know that day. I'm like, okay, but now you know. Don't do it again. But but on court, what you just said, Michelle, he do have another job lined up. He do. But it's not the fact that it's lined up. You don't have it yet. But oh, he's like, okay. I don't really want to work during the season. Why are you just telling people to take a leave of absence or something like that? Yeah, anyway. just take a leave of absence. He, he, worked at, he worked at Waterburger. I mean, he's a he's a. Oh, okay. Yeah. But still, like, he, that was a good lesson to teach him. Like, you, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. there's an order to doing things. Like, you don't do exactly. like that. So you want to be, you want to, you want to just up and quit on you, right? Like, if I just up and leave you and not be your dad no more, you wouldn't want that, right? <laughs> no. He'd be like, no, okay, you're going like, to need some yeah. food. Right. So, like. Why would you say that? That's not even even. <laughs> it's not even, but it's, it's just a, it's just a <laughs> example, you know, a good example That's that he can understand. Example. It's just a good example that I feel like he can understand, you know. Oh, that was an absolutely awful example. <laughs> no, but the, because the people really they 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 it took time to give him a job. You you want him to understand the importance of it. That's why I said that. Am I not? Did I did I do too much? No, you got it. Huh? Okay. Okay. Go All ahead. All right, Tina. I'm being a man right now. I didn't hear nothing that you said the last. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I'm sorry, did you say it one more time? <laughs> well, I'm just saying that the importance of that is like of you like telling your kid, I'm gonna stop being your dad, you know? No, it's it's an importance to that because it's important. <laughs> you know, this is another exa- that example. <laughs> no matter how many times you say it, it's still is it really that bad? Michelle, come on, she just being hard. It's really that bad? Okay, well, my bad. I try. You won't quite quit the job to not be like uh, taking us uh, taking away your fatherhood. Like that just <laughs> <laughs> I kind of think it's on the same level. But I mean, oh, he yeah. know I wouldn't do that, but like it just like I, I, when, I just want him to understand the importance of that. Like it's important for me to be your dad. So it's you also important for you to so it's still not making no sense. I love how you said it slow too this time. Like we was like we was gonna change our mind. The importance 
Um, oh, this only it's a, you. <laughs> it's a, no, because it's, it's, it's extremely to finish something all the way through. And if you can't, just let somebody know. You know, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Ten days said, said you're going to give your son two weeks notice. <laughs> mm -mm. I just have to give up and quit. You know, let's go on. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm going to. I'm out, nigga. I'm going to Thailand for Thai bitches. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to do like that. No, you know? <laughs> I'm not going to do that, you know? Bitch, yeah. nigga. No, I'm not doing that. Oh, yeah. I'm be like, I share this to my page. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just want him. I just kind of want him. Um, I, maybe it was a bad example, but I just want him to understand. Not maybe. The importance. That's right. Did you? Hmm. Mm. Come on, y'all gotta cut me some slack now. Come on, now. why y'all so goddamn hard on me on this show, man? I mean, y'all invite me on this show just to bully me. You be like, getting on us to cut it out. Sometimes I'm really don't bully like them. But um, so Tia, why are you mad? Oh, Tia's frozen. You frozen or you posing? No, you You're frozen. frozen. <laughs> <laughs> why are they you got frozen? linked up in this thing too? Oh, that's an ugly picture. <laughs> Dude, for that shit. Man, you looking real weird, bro. That was a kid. That was a kid. You. That was a kid. You with ugly. You like, like, oh man, why they got me frozen looking like that? They don't got you looking. <laughs> why they had you looking like? They like... <laughs> had you real messed up, man. For real. They had you down bad. Oh, oh man. Why am I bad? Why you mad, to? What ten dollars? Y'all was getting on me. I thought it was better than that ten dollars. God dang! I don't really have. I don't have any ten dollars. Ten day. Ten. Huh? I call him ten day. I, I call him ten dollars. Look, he, he never heard. Also Gerardo, Gerardo. So Gerardo. I call him G. You call him Gerardo. <laughs> it ain't Gerardo. The L is silent. <laughs> Gerardo. So what is it? Gerardo. Oh, like Harold. I'm sorry. Harold. Gerald. You, 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 what Geraldo. were you calling him? Gerald. 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 Oh my God. Um, He's like, man, hey, constantly fuck my name up. Um, I'm not mad about this, but I feel like this is the equivalent of people saying that, that I need somebody to make six figures or they make six figures. People are capping about them having a business. Like, that's like the new thing. Like, they popping up. They say they have a business, but. They really don't have a business. Like you haven't heard people say that they have a business and then uh -huh. they don't. Yeah. Um, that's a really? Yeah. Or maybe thing? they might. Yeah, that's true. Oh, they might have one for the PPP loan thing, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, that PPP loan got people popping off. Yeah. It does. It have people popping off. I'm like, you know, when did you get a business? And then they'll like tell you some like random stuff. And I'm like, oh, okay. When you go to jail, that's why I feel. I feel like if I ever get a business, anybody will fuck with me. That's why I'm saying yeah, Uncle Harris. I'm gonna name myself Uncle Harris. Oh my god, DB, like, I want you to start speaking positive words. Of I'm mad because DB says things that I just be joking. I just be joking. I just be joking, man. I don't oh, know. Right. I gotta, I gotta stop serious. speaking that. You are. Right. I gotta stop saying that. You are. Right. I want you to speak positive words of affirmation and speak positivity into the things that you have going on. Don't call yourself ugly. Um, be joking you got uh, you got to do that to make people laugh it's entertaining is it a joke or like are you saying it because you really believe it and you joke because you don't want us to call you ugly first no <laughs> i mean i ain't i mean intervention. I don't, I don't, huh is this an intervention is this an, yeah, is I don't, intervention? let's not do it live on facebook guys okay let's get off i'm facebook. concerned db about you are repeat after me i am beautiful <laughs> I am beautiful. <laughs> I am right. smart. I am kind. I, I, I am kind. handsome. You is kind. <laughs> okay, let's see if anybody says anything before we, because I just got on here. We're about to get off. This time. Why did everybody get on so late tonight? Texas LLC annual meeting dues. <laughs> Shut up, uh, 10 day. <laughs> That's stupid. All right, you guys. Um, sorry, you guys got on late. We're about to get off now. So we'll catch you guys. I didn't about to get on so late. I know. I know they did get on late because it was just, oh, and Denise said that wasn't um a living color that 
quote was from Mad TV. Yeah, Mad well, TV. I can. That's why I actually I can remember what it was. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. Was I, Mad I thought it was in Living Color. TV. It was Mad okay. TV. Oh, that shit was hilarious. Mad TV. Why mm-hmm. wonder why they took that off? It was so funny. I'm sure it was. That, that shit went. Out. It got it got real lame at the end. It, it got real lame. lame. Oh, I do remember. I know I'm. I was mad now. Um, I want men to stop uh, trying to make rules over women's vaginas, uteruses, and ovaries. Like, mind your business. You cannot tell people what to do with their bodies. Um, I don't like the aspect of people trying to pull religion into someone trying to have a religious conversation with me about it. And I was like, you live with your girlfriend and you guys have a kid, so don't pick pe- cherry pick the Bible. Because if you want to cherry pick the Bible, you wouldn't. Have- had these kids and living out of wedlock so i'm not trying to hear all of that so i feel like there are reasons why people have abortions um and if it's valid to them it's their body and that's what they want to do that they should be allowed to do that it shouldn't be white men in congress telling women what to do with their bodies because you can take all these cramps that i got right now since you're so concerned with being in my uterus i can transfer them over to you and we'll see how your day goes after that i seen i seen a good tweet about Go ahead, Michelle. Don't forget, you're going to say a good tweet. But when um, I remember my, it was in my freshman or my sophomore year in college, and I was in a philosophy course, and I had a professor make almost the exact same point that you did. And um, it was, you know, like very controversial topics that we were talking about. This is an all girl school. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she said that people use religion as their reason for being against abortion. And she's it's very specifically said, there were a lot of decisions you made leading up to this, but this was the point where you decided that your religion was the most important. Right. And so Mm. it's like, mm, you know, because the majority of the religion say premarital sex is absolutely wrong. And then you always argue about no sin bigger than the other. And then now here we are. And so what is it really? And but anyway, go ahead. That's, that's a or, or gluttony, if you want to be, I've seen a fat white man on TV talking about that's the cardinal sin. You are overeating. That is a sin as well. You ain't supposed to be that size. So mm. figure it out. Like, quit again. Let women govern. Because I saw something, I don't know if it was fake news, but they were saying in Tennessee, and it may have been fake news, but they were banning. In Missouri. Yeah. Missouri. They were banning Plan B. Like that. Yeah, I heard like, they, 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 they were planning like condoms too. That's stupid. Like they're finna ban condoms. How? So so people, so the thing is, you're gonna ban these things. People are still they're gonna start doing these kitchen abortions and people are gonna start dying from that because people are still right. gonna have them, especially girls that are in high school who know their parents gonna beat the brace off of them because they're pregnant, so they're still gonna find a way or they're gonna right. be knocking themselves downstairs doing crazy stuff, or the yeah. STD rate is gonna go up even more if you take away condoms that's absolutely ridiculous like come on now come on. Yeah. or they're going to deliver their kids and then wrap them up and oh don't mean trash cans yep. yeah yep, left, that's and right. true too. left and right man it's gonna be crazy it's amazing man. it's amazing how much some people care about the sperm and egg in the womb but don't care about the actual life here on earth Let's let's have more guns. Right. But we can't have, but but you tell us when and where we can't have babies. That don't make no sense, man. And who's gonna take care of the kids when people start having them? Because the government don't take have take care of the kids now. There's so many kids in foster care and in homes (coughs) and all these detention centers and all types of other places. So why are you bring more kids to the world? Oh yeah, they need more people for their prison pipeline. That's right. You are okay, right. So what was the tweet that you saw, TV? Well, I seen a tweet that was saying that a a, a guy, I mean, a woman can like have sex with multiple men, over 100 men, and only create one baby in nine months. A man can have sex with, or a man can have sex with over 100 women and have 100 babies in nine months. So who really needs to be governed on the- Who needs to be governed? Who really yeah, they need to, need to have going. a. They definitely need to mm-hmm. have a birth control for um, oh, guys like boys too. I feel like young boys. I don't heard that. If I'm not mistaken, that was something that was in the making. I'm not it for is. sure. It's, yeah, it's so. in the making, but it should have been. It shouldn't just be now. Should have. We should have been first, and that's, that's yeah. just no lie. It's just no Again, lie. Again, men Girls making over. decisions over women's ovaries, uteruses, and vaginas that they should not be making decisions over. And like, like I just knew I mean, that. 
How many laws do we have that govern men's bodies? Zero. Oh, okay. Yeah, zero. Not one. Yeah, not one. That's, that's crazy, man. I, I, I do not agree with that. I do not agree with that at all. Like, I'm not even a woman. Like, I'm that shit makes me hella feminist. Like, real talk. Like, no, nah, I'm not gonna tell a woman what she can't do. No, nah, not with her yeah, body. That's crazy. That's yeah, absolutely crazy. Talk. Like, I'm super. I'm all woman on this. Like, real talk. That's bullshit. We but appreciate you. you. We appreciate huh? you being on our side because a lot of people. I've seen so many posts. For men, I was so surprised. I'm like, really? That's the stance that you're taking on? And, and most of it was like biblical. And I'm like, as much foolish as you post on Facebook, all of a sudden you a pastor. Like, relax, bro. Like, nobody's now you love God. <laughs> love God. Right. Now you Jesus' best friend. You the thirteenth disciple. Get out of here. <laughs> all right, you guys. Well, we got we got to derail because that was something we needed to talk about. Yeah. Um, we will see you guys next Tuesday, same time, same bat channel. Um, hope you guys have an amazing week. Stay safe and um, take a shot tonight and go to bed and calm you down. And have a good Tuesday. Oh, you're gonna take one. What is that, Mon monkey shoulder? Oh, Martell. Okay, hey. go ahead. Take a shot. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna monkey shoulders. Take a shot to take us out. Peace, love, and coconut oil. Okay. Everybody. Okay. Oh, I'm about to say, oh my God. I'm a cold ass actor, huh? That should be an actor, huh? I was like, are you okay? That should be an actor, man. I was about to, look, Michelle about to end it so we wouldn't see nothing bad happen to him. Not on our watch. No, you, just, you just close the computers. <laughs> like, bye. Oh, man. Bye, y'all. All right, bye, yeah. guys. Good night. Mm. Good night.